0-2 for the Bears. Just from last week to this week. They're, you know, you, you look at the Packers game, and I honestly don't know if there was one single positive that you can take from that game. I mean, running game needed to be better, special teams, offense, coaching, whichever. Today's game, however, as terrible as an ending as that was, I actually do have a couple positives with this team, okay? Number one positive that I know, this coaching staff is holding Justin Fields back. Why is that a positive, people are going to ask me. Because we need better coaching. Luke Getze is not the guy. Matt Eberflus, the, this is exactly why I wasn't sure about him as head coach. Nobody knew who he was. I mean, I knew he was defensive coordinator for the Colts. They had some really good seasons there for a while. I still was very curious with the hire at the time. It didn't make any sense to me. Um you know, he had a firm grasp on this game today. I realized Eddie Jackson was out. Brisker was out for a while. You know, there were players that were missing today. But 450-plus yards of offense you gave up to Tampa Bay, to Baker Mayfield, Rashad White, Mike Evans. I mean, Mike Evans pushed off, should have had a, a flag for offensive pass interference in the first half. He broke off for a 60-yard play on there. But other than that, like, this is the coaching staff that we have. This is what we drew up for this game plan today, that's unacceptable. And a number two positive that I that I see from today's game, Justin Fields can throw the ball down the field. And why our bum-ass offensive coordinator, Getze, continues to throw screen passes two yards behind the line of scrimmage, four yards behind the line of scrimmage, one yard in front of the line of scrimmage. Stop with the fucking screen passes. You literally have a quarterback that can throw the ball down the field. You had DJ Moore today had a huge game with throwing the ball downfield. 25, 30-yard throws down. Chase Claypool, of all people, had a touchdown today for 20-plus yards. I mean, the dude can throw the ball down the field. And why, all of a sudden? I will say that I like seeing Justin Fields in the pocket, but why is he always in the pocket today? If there's all that pressure... Tampa Bay still has a really respectable defense. It's a veteran defense. They blitz. They are coached by a defensive mind. Okay? So they're going to be a nuisance on, on defense. But if you're in the pocket and your offensive line, you're missing Davis, your offensive line still is not, excuse me, offensive line is still not what it needs to be. Why don't you have him rolling out? Why don't you do more bootlegs? You had a bootleg run touchdown on the first drive of the game. I mean, you have things that are possible with this team. The coaching staff is just continuously holding back our players. All last year, we didn't see anything from the coaching staff. And this year, we're supposed to be a lot better. And we're still doing things that we did last year. We're still doing things that we've done in the past to lose. It's got to stop at some point. The repetition of failure has to stop at some point. Anybody could see that watching the game today. Or at least anybody smart can see that watching the game today. If I'm a coach on the Bears' sideline, stop with the screen passes. Let the guy throw the ball down the field. Let him throw. He can. He's showing you he can do it. We have the receivers there. Let it happen. It shouldn't be that fucking hard to call a game where you trust your quarterback, who's so damn talented, is one of the best out of his class, out of the draft, right there with Trevor Lawrence. Let the guy throw the ball. And you know he can run. He's a playmaker. Let it happen. But the Bears, they got to stop with the poor repertoire of coaching and bad play calling and conservative. Oh, my gosh, the conservative nonsense. We've seen conservative since Ron Turner back in the early 2000s. Enough with 15 to 20 years of conservative play calling. I swear the last offense we had where we weren't conservative, besides one fluke year of Matt Nagy, was back with Mark Trestman in 2013. And that, and we only had that for two years with, with no defense. But honestly, we oh, a year of Tressman, that was the best offense we've had in Chicago in 20 years. I honestly think that was a better offense than with the first year Nagy. But we got to stop. We got to stop seeing the same play calling. We have to stop seeing the nonsense and, and, and just the back and forth of failure over and over again that you know is not going to work you lost last week because of screen passes you lost today because of a screen pass what you you were only down three with two minutes left with timeouts you had a chance to go down the field you threw the ball down the field against the bucks and it worked and you got destroyed by baker mayfield 
You miss, I mean, and all the miss sacks today. Najekwe had a really bad game. I mean, you know, where where were some of the playmakers that we had out there? Just nobody was tackling the quarterback. Nobody was sacking the quarterback. They started letting the run game get rampant in the second half. These are the things that you cannot do. You are not able to do that and win football games. But I do have some positives out of this game, unlike I did last week against Green Bay. The positives are that I, I'm beginning to know what the real problem is with the Bears. It is their coaching staff. You gotta let this guy throw the ball. You have to let Fields blossom. You have to let your playmakers be playmakers, like they were with the other teams that they came from. Let them do what they're supposed to do. And if you can't have faith in them, you shouldn't be in charge of the team that you're coaching right now. So, you know, Kansas City next week, not expecting that to be a good game by any means. So, you know, you're gonna be looking at pot potentially 0-3 already. 0-3 is when the season starts getting away and you're only in the first month. So that's football. I mean, that's the problem with football. You're a week, a game a week. So three losses, four losses in the first month of the season, you're already packing and looking ahead to the next year almost. So you're at a 10% chance of 0-2 teams to make the playoffs in the last tw last two decades or three decades of, of stats. So that's not encouraging either. You know, Khalil Herbert had a decent game. Looks like that he with Johnson is a great, great running back duo like with Montgomery and Herbert last year. So there's a positive there. It was finally nice to see Claypool get a ball today, knowing that he could still maybe catch a ball every once in a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, we got a break with the division. I mean, everybody, the whole division lost. The Vikings lost, the Bears lost, the Packers lost, uh, and the Lions lost. So, you know, you're only one game back, but still. Just too many, too many situations today that are fixable that need to get taken care of. And it falls heavily on coaching. But were they the only reason we lost the game? No. Missed opportunities, stupid turnovers, all that kind of stuff. But that is that is on coaching. So that is the number one reason today of why we didn't win this game. Um, and it's freaking hot outside, by the way, too. 92 degrees in Tampa with humidity of 60 degrees. It felt like, it literally felt like 108 degrees on the field. So... You can't keep your defense on the on the field all game long and have Tampa winning possession, converting third down and ones, third down and twenties, third down and fifteens, third down and nines. You can't do that. You got to get off the field. So, and the fact that they played on the field all game that will explain why they gave up so many yards and they were shorthanded. So, try to regroup, get through the next week. Hope everybody's having an awesome weekend. Uh, NFL Sundays always at its best.